The batteries that I'm using in my DIY Powerwall are lithium batteries, which can potentially be very dangerous. So today, we're going to take some of the first steps needed to incorporate a BMS or battery management system so that we increase the safety. So here we go. When I first pulled this battery out of a Chevy Volt, inside was this. Now this was Chevy's BMS or battery management system and it communicates back up with the car. So uh, it, it can't actually be used just as it is, which is unfortunate. But I think I can use a bunch of these uh, wiring harnesses uh, to bring all the cells together. Uh, I thought at first that I would have to get one BMS for every one of my batteries. I actually have eight batteries up here on the wall. This is one of them, and it is 12 cell groups in series. Recently, I learned that I can actually parallel uh, cell one from battery one to cell one from battery two. And I can parallel all the cells together so that I don't need as many BMSs. And I thought that was great. So in this video, we're going to see if I can salvage the wiring harness from Chevy from, that came with the battery. And I'm going to see if I can cut this up and bring all the leads down into this area somewhere. When I look at this BMS, I can see lots of wires on both sides of the BMS. So I think what they're doing is they're taking one wire from every cell, which would be from this connector, and it's going back to one wire connection here. I don't think there's any splices built into the wiring harness. I think all the connections happen inside this BMS, which would be really great if that's the case. Here we go. Check that out. That is fancy. So sometimes people smarter than me can point to a circuit board and tell what things are. So I'll just say that there's a bunch of stuff here that does things. Look the backside even is completely filled with really cool stuff. It's too bad I can't use it. We don't need. So these three are going to be the topmost shelf and they're taped down uh, to this point. Now this is where it then joins up to the BMS uh, leads here. And so I'm going to leave it taped to this point uh, and it looks like now I can continue untaping some of these. Oh, I feel so bad doing that. <laughs> I need this on volts DC. And now I can go through checking the pins one at a time. And now I can figure out which pin corresponds to which uh, tab, which cell. Now I was checking the bottoms of these for connections. And I was getting very confused. I was going through and I was labeling each one with a piece of masking tape and a number. And some of them were coming up with the same reading. And I couldn't figure out why. So I wound up removing uh, this wrap, which is an orange tape. And I found splices inside here. So check out inside the wiring harness are splices. That's what this wrap of duct tape is. So notice over here there's one blue wire coming in and two blue wires coming out. The way they actually did this was they spot welded them together. So I wound up stripping all the tape off the wiring harnesses here, and it turns out uh, inside the wiring harnesses there are lots of these splices. Uh, so check them out as you go down. There's uh, here's some more. Like this one here has three wires coming out from it. Uh, here's one. This green one has uh, one to four wires coming out of it. And I don't know why Chevy did that. What was the reason? It doesn't really matter to me. I just that was throwing off me trying to figure out 
which wire went to which cell. So now I can go through to each splice and I'm gonna cut, cut it down so there's just one wire on each splice. So I have a problem on number six. There's no connectivity uh, to the pin. So whatever's inside this black glob here has died or broken. Looks like a tiny ceramic fuse. There's a number on top. Maybe I'll be able to read that. Let's see if I can desolder this. Yep. All right. I got it off. Yeah, it looks like I ripped off a lot more than originally intended. So there's that little fuse. I recently picked up a pack of these little glass axial fuses. So let's let's give this a shot and see if I can get this repaired. All right, so what do you guys think of that? Uh, electrical solder, it's rosin core and lead free. We should be reading 19.44 volts. And if we go over here, 19.44. So we're getting a, a reading now, finally. I hope we don't have any more of those blown fuses. Uh, that took a long time for me to figure out what was going on. I know this is a bit ridiculous, but I put a screw in the back here all spread out uh, and each uh, wire has a voltage to it. And I wrote the voltage number next to the screw. I've got them all numbered. So this is one of the packs that actually has 16 cell groups. So we got one battery and then we have a partial battery with four cells, which is why some of these are doubled up wires. So I'm gonna take this down now. And I've got it disconnected up top because otherwise I could short all these out. I labeled which connector this is. It's number six, which I also put up here at the top. This is 46.6, so that's actually pin 13. And so on and so forth. And I'm just touching the very tip of the copper wire. I grab my labels, number one, and I can stick it over here. These are all my wire connections here, and I've taped them up. So now let's put them into a harness together. I drilled 13 holes in a piece of plywood and screwed it to a two x four. And my thought is that I can fish these wires through the holes corresponding to what number they are. And then I'll be able to staple them to the two x four uh, before putting it up in the wall where it's gonna be difficult. Well, we got all our wiring harnesses together, stapled to the block of wood. Look at that rat's nest there. Um, if I did this correctly, there should be eight wires in every hole, and there's 13 holes. <laughs> all right, so now I have to strip and uh, combine these up with a wire nut.
Well, here we go. We got all of our uh, we got all our wire nuts on here, and possible BMS connection here. Uh, hopefully that works. As you can see, it's just a two x four and a piece of plywood. All of our wires. So now we can get this attached. We have that connected up there. So I'll go ahead and plug it in. And once it's plugged in, I can actually push down this little locking tab on it. There we go. This particular one, number four, goes to this battery. And uh, I actually don't have enough room to do it across the front. So I'm going to pull the battery out a little bit, fish this behind, and then hopefully I can get it from behind. <laughs> I was able to cut out a notch back here, uh, so I'm going to try to run the wire up through that. Yeah, good, I can get it now. Okay, so now there's plenty of play, and it goes up, and it gets in there. Awesome. This is supposed to be the easy part. <laughs> So all the cables go up. Two of them go back here for these two batteries, but all the rest go up through the middle. And we have them going across to the tops. Okay, let's see if there's any balancing happening between the cells. No? Well, point one. Hey, point two, point two amps. Well, this project wound up taking several weeks. Uh, it, it just seemed like everything was going wrong. So, uh, but it, it's now working. We got something here. Uh, let's see if the BMS can be hooked up and and work. So here's our BMS, and it needs to be hooked up to the battery negative and then plugged in here. So I went ahead and soldered a wire on the battery negative post. Well, this is a BMS. It stands for Battery Management System. Uh, this particular one is way too small for a battery this size. So I'm actually going to use it just as a monitor. So BMS or battery monitor system. Okay, well, it didn't blow up. <laughs> uh, it actually showed up here uh, when I... Oh, something just bl bl blinked. Couldn't pair because of an encrypt pin or password. I gotta say, Technology stuff is a real challenge for me. It took me several days to get this app on the phone and working so that I could communicate and read the voltages from the BMS or battery monitor system in my application. Uh, but I finally got it on here. <laughs> and if we open it up, all the cells look totally in balance. They look awesome. Now this BMS does have little resistors built into it. Uh, to help uh, bleed off extra voltage. That's supposed to help balance. But in reality, the resistors that are built into this tiny thing aren't going to make any kind of impact on a battery this size. Now, I've been using this battery for almost a whole year now with no BMS, no balance, nothing. And all the cells are still right there. They're, they all look great. I went through and checked every single cell voltage with my multimeter and everything was in balance. So, you know, Chevy did a really nice job uh, making this battery. So I'm really excited. Now I have the ability to monitor the cells. Every cell group here has two cells inside of it. And now I've paralleled eight. So there's a total of 16 cells in parallel with each other. So that would take an incredibly long time for that to go out of whack. Well, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.